All right, hello everyone. So uh, for this for this lesson, what we're going to be going over is a simple suite script. So we're going to be creating a suite script that would load or create a message on the UI uh, or on the screen as soon as we load the um, a page. So as soon as we load, for example, the sales order page, we want to show a certain message. OK, so uh, the first thing you want to do here is you want to first open a folder. OK, so this is the folder where all your code would be. You can organize this however way you like. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go on my desktop and I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it uh, scripts. OK, and then I'm going to open that folder. Uh, maybe you couldn't see that part on my screen, but basically once you create open folder, it's going to uh, show you your window or your finder explorer for your folders and you're going to be creating a folder and opening a folder. All right, now we see here we have an empty folder. What we want to do here is we want to start by creating a new folder or a new file. So this file, remember, sweet script is actually just JavaScript. So what you want to do is you want to name it something dot JavaScript. So in this case here, we're going to toss, we're going to call it a test message dot JS for JavaScript. OK, uh, now you can name this however you want. The way we usually do it is we have a descriptive name. You don't want it to be very long. And then we're going to be going, uh, the way I usually do it is maybe I do a client side or user event, uh, something like this. So in this case, I'm just going to call it client side here at the end. This is really nothing but a convention that I personally use because this helps me really later on identify that, okay, this is a client side script especially when your uh, script becomes very, or you have a lot of scripts, you want to right away be able to identify. And remember, like we talked in one of the previous uh, lessons, client side, uh, basically each script is going to be one type. So if this is a client side script, it's always going to be all the different functions within the client side script. You cannot really mix them together. Okay. Now, these are going to be some uh, boilerplate. So these are going to be happening across every different file. So you want to memorize it or you want to put it on a certain thing. And I think in VS Code or different editors, you can actually create a template so that you can just insert the template as soon as you create a new file. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to do this, this section here and you can actually just copy it. Okay. And you're going to do at an API version and you're going to do 2.x unless you know a certain version. So we know it's 2.0 or above. So the X wrist represents that any version of 2.0. Um, uh, right now we are at 2.1, but depending on the time you see this video, it could be more. Okay. So these are just minor updates. Two is the most important part, or you can just have it as 1.0. Um, what we said already, we don't want that. Now these tags can be changed um, or you have actually a lot of different tags that you can put and you can read them on the documentation. But the, really the most important ones is this one to say it's 2.0. And the other important one is you're going to write N and then script type, and you're going to put the script type that you're using, right? So in this case, we know the script type is a client side script. So we're going to write here client script. Okay. Uh, if you're using user event script, you would write user events here. Okay. So in this case, it's going to be client side. So what are these useful for? Uh, they are used by the system automatically. So as soon as you upload this file to NetSuite, NetSuite automatically reads these tags at the top and they'll be they'll be able to determine, you know, what type of script it is and what's the version that it should be it's, it is using. Um, so these are really, really important in here. Uh, you have extra types here. If you want to write a description, if you want to write certain information, a name for it, you can always do that. So the more the merrier, because then you actually make sure that everything is documented correctly. But these are the minimum that you need. All right, now this is the, remember 2.0 is using modules. So the first thing we need to do with every different script, we want to define the modules that we're gonna be using within this script, okay? So literally the first thing we're gonna write is we're gonna say define, we're gonna open parentheses in here and we're gonna add, add an, an array, okay? This array accepts strings. So we're gonna name it exactly the same name as the modules. So all the modules starts with N, unless you're customizing your own module, but all the NetSuite module starts with N. And then you want to write the name of the module. So you can write log, maybe error, maybe HTTP. There's a lot of different modules. So for now, what we're going to be using for this tutorial is going to be the N slash UI slash slash message. OK, so this is going to be the message uh, modules. This is when we're going to see how this is going to be looking at at the end. Now you can define multiple modules in here. So I can say n slash HTTP. I can define another module here called n slash log 
but you don't you know you can add as many as you want but just remember that the more modules you load the the, the more you know NetSuite is going to have to load at every run okay now the first argument of this defined function like we said was this array right now the next argument that we're going to write is going to be a function okay so this is basically a callback function saying once you load this module we want to do a certain thing okay so this is just a standard function in here now this function is always going to receive whatever modules you uh, defined okay so in this case here we define message so this will get a message um, variable here okay or an argument so this message argument is really the module this is where you're going to be using it inside of your code in here okay this is all your code is going to always happen inside of this callback function okay if this looks uh confusing to you really just don't worry this is going to be really once you you know this is going to be the same every time so you can just memorize how this layout looks like okay now the last thing that we now what, the last thing we need to do is actually we need to define what is the event right so we know this is a client side script and we know within the client side script we have different events right so for example page in net is an event we might have field changes as a as a different a um, event right so in this case what we want to do is actually we're going to call a page init function okay so inside of this function we're going to be doing another function here we're going to call it function page init okay and this is actually the code or the block of code that will be executed on the page init okay now the last thing we want to do is we want to return this function okay so we're going to return an object like this so we're going to call it page init and then page init Okay, all we're doing here is we're returning a function that says on this event, page init, we want to execute this. This could be any name here. I can call this, um, I can call this my custom function. And then I can return it here. So I'm, I'm just telling the system that page init, you know, you execute this block of code. It could be multiple different functions in here, however many you want, but it's always going to return the starting point, which is this one. Okay, so this one could, in theory, run a different function. So in here, I can have a different function, and I can call it, um, you know, math or you know, plus function. And you know, I, this can have a certain logic in here. And then this one here could call this function, which is fine. But as long as I'm giving this as a starting point, it will execute any other function that we need to. All right, so. We're just going to return this to page init because this is the usually the convention. We want to call it the same name because then it makes sense. All right. Now, what is it that we want to execute inside of this function? OK, so what we want to execute is we want to execute a message. We want the message to show up on page init. OK, so this block of code will show up as soon as we load the page. OK, uh, notice that we're not specifying what page, right? We're not specifying that this will be executed on a sales order or a purchase order. This will be handling within NetSuite. We're telling NetSuite later on when we upload this, we're going to tell it this will apply to a sales order or this will apply to a purchase order. But all pages act the same. They all have a page in it. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to define a variable. Let's call it var message. And we're going to make it equal to our module. So this module already has a function or has a method. Think of this of a class, right? This has a method already called create. OK, so create will receive an object. OK, and this object always has a title. And we're going to call this my title. And then we pass a different variable here. We, we call it a message. And we can pass whatever message we want. So I'm going to say this is an amazing message. And then lastly, we can define a type. OK, uh, the types messages can be of different types. What we're going to be using here is a confirmation. And this is really about the color um, of the message. OK. So we're going to do message.type.confirmation. OK, now, where did I get this information? I got this from their documentation. I don't remember this uh, by heart. It's like I mentioned in the previous videos. It's really useful to have this in your doc. Basically, once you know that there is a message module, really all the time that you need to use this, you're going to be referring back to the documentation. OK, um, and we're going to be taking a look at the documentation in just a second to see what different methods or what different types do we have. All right. Now, we just if we just created a message in a variable. So this message variable, uh, it just hosts the message itself, but it doesn't really display it yet. So we wanted, what we want to do here is we want to say message dot show. OK, and if we leave this empty, it's going to show forever. 
We don't want that. So what we want to do here is a duration. And we're going to pass it in, uh, in milliseconds. So in this case, 5,000 is five seconds, basically. OK, and that's pretty much all you have to do. So this is a script right now that on the page in it will create a function for you or will create a message for you. And then it will display that message for five seconds. OK, so in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at how to upload this into NetSuite and then how we're going to be uh, seeing this message.